Overcoming obstacles no matter the distance or disability. In his latest I Have a Story, Greg McQuaid and Chief Photographer Brad Wilson introduce us to a Chesterfield man who is crossing the finish line of life with a shoestring and a shoulder to lean on. Crazy, crazy the journey that I've been through. Taylor Jones is starting at square one. The Richmond man is learning the basics like cooking all over again. I know this is probably the sour cream. This is probably mayonnaise, but just to make sure. Simple chores can be challenging when you can't see. You don't really need your eyes to do any of this stuff if you teach yourself how to do it. The married 31-year-old lost most of his sight seven years ago. So this is my, um, this is my old trusty uh, cane. Uh, I went through most of my training at the Center for the Blind with this cane, and it got really beat up. On Christmas morning 2014, Taylor crashed his SUV into a home after falling asleep at the wheel. The porch of the house, I don't remember any of this, thank God, but the porch of the house collapsed on top of me when I was still in the car. Suffering from severe brain injuries, Taylor was placed into a medically induced coma. They didn't know if I would survive or how long I would survive. Doctors were not optimistic. They had told my family that they weren't sure if I was gonna be able, what kind of brain function I was gonna have. You can do it a little bit further. You're almost there, Taylor. Taylor slowly there. learned to walk again, step by step. Push with those arms, bring your shoulders up, bring your head up. But it's also, if I put it in a time. That His new normal has been a difficult adjustment. So just by labeling the five, I know kind of the way around the number pad. I have days where they're more challenging than others. I have tough, I, I like to call them tough blind days. On the road to recovery. My mom gave this to me right before she passed and it's always been my rock. He would draw strength from the one family member not by his side. <sighs> A lot of emotions, man. Taylor's mother, Catherine, lost her battle with cancer one year before his accident. And it was really hard to watch her in so much pain and fight the way she fought. She had so much courage and strength though, and it's like, and it, ne it never wavered. Catherine's spirit pushes him through daily. I leaned on this particular quote a lot. Uh, at any given moment, we all have the opportunity to say, this is not how my story, uh, story ends. Taylor's story is not ending on a couch. To me, in my head, I don't, there's no other option. The former volleyball player at George Mason may have lost his vision, but the crash did not rob him of his competitive spirit. I'm thankful for what I still have. Running would be his outlet. Seems kind of crazy, but why not? Let's do it. Since the accident, Taylor has finished 10 half marathons in Richmond. It was very emotional, and it was a uh, very powerful, powerful moment for me. But the athlete yearn to go farther. I realized that like the possibilities are there. I just got to go take them. Two years ago, he set a goal, tackle the biggest marathon in the world, New York City. The seed was planted. Uh, so it uh, has, has blossomed from there. Taylor just needed a guide to go the distance with him. People think you're crazy when you say you're a runner. Uh, this is one person didn't think I was crazy though. That person, friend and colleague Dan Beckman, volunteered to be Taylor's eyes in the Big Apple. To be the guide is so much more mental than physical. The pair would train together month yeah. after month. We are in beautiful Bryan Park, Richmond, Virginia. Training uh, miles. Training miles. Mile after mile. How are you feeling? But, <laughs> <laughs> Early in our training, I closed my eyes and tried to run. <laughs> it's terrifying. Their bond, a low-tech solution. So this is our uh, fancy system. It is a, a long, extra long shoestring. Um, this is what we use. Every athlete is different. On November 7th, the friends start side by side for the 50th running of the New York City Marathon, all 26.2 miles. It was awesome. Uh, there were several other para-athletes there lining up with us, which was super cool. And just like that, you go down and you're in Brooklyn and the crowd noise is deafening. It's six deep on either side of you. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Taylor admits, halfway in, the marathon nearly got the better of him. Again, I'm hurting, and I, you know, want to stop running, but it's not just me I'm running for. But with Dan's guidance and a push from mom, Taylor persevered. I, I figured she'd probably be like, what are you doing? You're running a race. Run the, run. Like, wait, go, go. Just putting courage over fear um, to take the place of fear ultimately is what we're all about. The oh, friends finally reached the end. The man who can't see, crossing first. Yeah, he's one of my heroes. For Dan. Taylor's one of my heroes. Their bond is stronger than a shoestring. Yeah, I almost liked the uphill better. Yeah, right. One guy was like, wait, did you win? And I'm like, oh, no, no, what? Oh, you got like the gold medal. And I'm like, oh, no, they're all, they're all gold. <laughs> Conquering the New York City Marathon, the pinnacle of personal success that can't be measured with a medal. This is what all this work has been for. He may be starting over, but for Taylor Jones, what matters most? crossing the finish line in life. I've been through so much to get here. I, I love this challenge and I'm ready for the next one. Taylor isn't hanging up his running shoes just yet. He has the ultimate goal of running all world marathon majors. His next race is Chicago next October.